Hi there, good morning. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. Welcome to 30 minutes of my day. I have a tiny little bit of work to do on uh, journeys through bookland. Uh, I'm getting close to the end with this one. Uh, I'm still planning on making um, journaling cards today, later today, but right now I want to work on camouflaging the repair work that I had to do for uh, this lower part of the spine where you can see it's got kind of a Frankenstein scar there and it would be fine if I wanted to leave it just like this it would be fine and I have done that in the past but um, I'm actually going to uh, do a little a little book this book the Nick Smith <laughs> I almost uh, book the Nick Smith <laughs> Nick the booksmith <laughs> Uh, something she does for sometimes on her journals is um, instead of putting a metal book plate on the front of journals, she'll make one, you know, um, a die cut or uh, or such. And she'll she's also done similar ones on uh, the spines of books. And I thought I could do that because if you recall, I was thinking of maybe putting a faux. Uh, library label down here you know a little white label with some typing on it and I was thinking about doing that but I changed my mind after I was uh, I couldn't find much on TV last night and uh, so hold on I'm thinking <laughs> I'm, I'm looking over here at what I'm going to be bringing out um, I couldn't find much on TV so I was you know, I watched through some old videos and some old, she did some flip throughs of some journals she had finished, golly, two years ago, a while ago. And that's when I thought, ah, I could do that on the spine of Journeys Through Bookland. So um, what she did for the spine of a book that she made brand new, uh, completely herself. So it wasn't that she was restoring an old book. She had created a whole new book. And she put um, one of her little book plates on the spine of the book. It was wide enough that she put a book plate right on the spine. And because it was paper and it was a curved spine, she could still glue it on there. And I thought, that's what I could do here because this is curved, just slightly curved, but it's curved. So I had to do something that I could um, adhere it and feel safe in doing that so um i came up with a, a nick the, nick the booksmith uh helped me make a decision so what i think i'm going to do here i'm getting my old bricks out here to hold this up is um she she has i think she's got a die cut i don't have a die cut machine so what I did was I took an old, um, hold on, I'm over here, I'm over here. I took, uh, <laughs> boy, my, my brain and my mouth aren't, um, aren't communicating yet today. A slide frame, a, a cardboard frame from an old slide. And so I took one of those and I cut it down. Uh, using an exacto blade and then I just trimmed those corners off and sanded them so that they're nice and smooth because this is so thick my corner chomper wouldn't go through it so I find for me the best way around that is to just snip off that tip of the corner and then use a sanding block and sand it down and then I used um let me go get it because I'm having a brain, another brain cramp. Holy crow. Maybe I need to be more caffeinated in the morning. Uh, glossy accents. So I put uh, four little drops of glossy accents. Now I got this ready yesterday because I knew I wanted to do it. But glossy accents can take a long time to dry. And I wanted to make sure it was dry. So I left it overnight. And then what I'm going to do is 
this is going to be like a little frame. I've already curved it uh, just using my hands and encouraging it to, to bend like that. And I'm going to put it right here. So I may curve it a bit more. Um, you know what? I might wait till I get till I get it ready to go. Now, if you recall, this is the paper that are the end papers for uh, this book, which Jen sent me from. Jen in Germany sent them to me so wonderfully. Thank you, Jen. And uh, because of this ship and the colors, the blue and the gold, I thought what I'd do is I would use this ship here and frame it in this little frame that I created. And then we're going to put it down here on the spine. So it gives you a little sneak peek. If this is sitting on your bookshelf, it gives you a little sneak peek as to what is going to be on the cover when you pull it off the shelf. And then you go, oh, look at the cover, look at the ship. So that's my plan. Actually, I don't need this here yet because we need to um, use one of my favorite things. Gilding wax. Now, I need some paper. Gilding wax. I love it and I hate it. it well, I don't hate it. It makes me nervous because if you get it on your hands or you get it on anything, it's like glitter. It'll be everywhere before you know it. And it stays put. So if you get gilding wax on something, it'll be everywhere. Oh, I just... Oh, gosh, I love the smell of this stuff. So I am going to do this guy with some gilding wax. And make it beautiful. And the gilding wax will go right over those glossy accents. And they'll look like little um, brads. Now, if I had thought of this ahead of time, I actually could have used brads. I don't think I could have used a metal one because it still needs to be curved. Um, but I definitely could have used paper, uh, gilding wax, or else, um, you know, a metallic marker. I've got a metallic marker that I just love. Uh, 20, uh, 14 karat gold? 24 karat gold? I can't remember. Anyhow, I love it. Um, and then I could have... I could have put it onto the spine before the text block went in. So I could have actually used brads to really, really reinforce it onto the spine. Um, I'm not worried about this staying on the spine because this is paper. So I'm quite sure it will be happy to stay on the spine. So I'm just making sure everything's covered with gilding wax. I'll be buffing it in a second. It doesn't look all the best yet, but it will. Very excited about this. So I'm just getting the sides because this is kind of thick. I wanted it a little thick so that it really looked um, almost a little industrial. And then I'm going to make sure these sides are all gold because they'll show it's, as you can see, it's thick. I'm going to have to wash my hands before I touch anything else because I'm totally into it now. There's just gold everywhere. That's good. I really need a smaller brush to get in here, but I don't want to have to 
I find that you have to sort of devote one brush to gilding wax and that there's no getting it off. So you just, it's, it's forever your gilding wax brush. Oh, this looks really, really cute. I, oh, another thing I did, this um, film slide frame was a little bit glossy so uh, before I put the glossy accents on it I sanded it a bit and roughed it up there we go all right I'm going to get this away and then I'm going to wipe down hold on I want this really really far away because I don't trust it so uh, before I clean that up, I want to, I just want to sort of brush this. Yeah, see, I need a bit more. That glossy accents, um, or the, glo <sighs> the glossy finish, I should have sanded a bit more. And I still can, so I'm not worried. But there's just one little area there, right here. That I still need a bit more on. So I'm just going to go in and really, really. I find that gilding wax, again, I will, I am not an expert. In fact, I can't find very many people that use it that can tell me what to do. Um, but I have found in the past that sometimes. Gilding wax can be a bit like nail polish. Do you know how you can, um, if you blop some nail polish on a fingernail, you can actually, and it's not where you want it, you can blop more nail polish on it and it will let you wipe it off. Nail polish will remove nail polish. Um, I find that gilding wax, if you keep going over it with more gilding wax, you can end up, it, the gilding wax will pull off the more gilding wax. So if that's not working after I try and buff this now, I may end up sanding it again. I'm going to try buffing it with just a soft little cotton swab instead of rough paper. And just gently give that a little, a little once over. And hopefully this is, hopefully this will do the trick. And I may go in with a bit of Distress Ink. Um, just to make it look a little older. Because this book is 99 years old. So I just don't see how a 99 year old book would have a beautiful brand new shiny gold looking plate on the spine. All right, so I'm going to, hmm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my gold flakes to a minimum. <clears throat> All right, let's put that there, and I want that. There's some gold chunkies there that I don't want on my desk. Oh, that's from the other day when we were trying out stuff from my my thrift haul now. Wet wipe to wash my hands and get the gold off of them. Sorry, I'm going to do this off screen. Um, I'll keep talking to you, but it's just I can see better over here what I'm if I've got it all off. Because I don't want to, I don't want to get it on the book where I don't want it. There, that's good. You have to really look it all over. It's just like glitter. Hmm. 
Let me go get everywhere. There, I think I'm good. I'm going to get rid of this because that had gold wax on it. Now I gotta check again, make sure I didn't get any on me. All right. Now I am going to <sighs> hmm. I'm trying to decide if I want to use an old soft brush rather than a Q-tip to to whack to um Put a little bit of, I wonder if that'll even, I don't know, I'm new to this, whether, oh yeah, that looks nice, okay. Uh-oh. Too late. I'm going to have to try and clean my pad. I can see flecks of gold on it. Oh boy. What we do for our art. There, I like that. All right, that's, that's nice. Now this, and that's got gold on it. All right. Hmm. Let's see if we can just sort of. Yeah. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I can see a few little gold flecks here. Not that that would be horrible. It's certainly, of all the metallics, gold is my favorite over silver or bronze <coughs> or copper or. I'm a gold kind of girl. All right. So I am going to, this could still have gold on it, so it's going, it's like, it's like working with a sterile field. <laughs> All right. I like that. Now I'm wondering, I'm just wondering if I should seal this. And I may take it outside and give it a quick seal with my Mod Podge. So I'm going to pause for a second. What am I at? Hold on. I'm going to move. Hopefully I don't disconnect you. Oh, I'm at 17 minutes. Okay, I can do this. I'm going to pause for a second, and I'm going to go out and spray seal this. Okay, so I gave that a quick little spritz. When it's nice weather, like, me, like right now, I much prefer to use my... Mod Podge spray sealant outside because it really stinks. Fortunately, it dries very quickly. So this is the one I like. And uh, I'm going to put that there. So I'm going to cut it out. And be careful because I may want to still use those ones. They're those beautiful tiles. There. There's our little ship. Now I want to, that's too white for me. I want it yellowed a bit. It's not yellowing. Where is my... I think I lost my antique linen uh, makeup sponge. That's black. That's walnut. That's photo. I write the names on it so that I don't, don't mix them up. Because I've done that. Which, so I learned... Yeah, it's not. All right, I may very well just flip it over. I don't know if you've ever done this, but it works. And you'll get a better on the stubborn ones with this really pale antique 
linen. That's better. Come on, off you come. Thank you. I find it almost has a slightly oily uh, residue that it leaves. The antique linen. I don't find it with any of the other distressings, but antique linen, I find. So I find sometimes I have to wipe it down and get off any extra. There, that's a bit better. Now I want some of this. Oh, let's get these out of the way while I mix up my brushes. And just, I want it older looking. Come on, cooperate. I like it darker around the edges and try and avoid the center. That's much better. That's looking more like 99 years old. And I'm still going to need to trim it, but I can trim it afterwards um, after I'm finished inking. So here you can see what color it was and what color it is now. It's more like these yellow ones, which I like. So that's good. Twigs. All right. So now it needs to be, I got to trim some of it off so I can glue it to the back of this frame. And then I'm going to glue the whole thing to the spine. That's good. Is that how? That's good. And now, so I need to take about that much off each side. I don't want to take too much off. I need to have enough room to glue the this little ship to the inside of that frame. Take those little corners off. Don't want anything showing. Let's see. Still want a little bit more off. Let's take a bit more off this side. That's cute. All right, let me make sure I'm in. Alrighty, so I am going to use three in one, and I'll tell you why. Because because I used three in one, let's move this over a bit. Can you see here? Because I used three in one to do this repair work, and there is a little bit on the top surface. I'm worried that a water-based glue will not want to stick to this acetone-based glue that is right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use an acetone-based glue to do my glue work. So let's turn this over. This is going to look pretty. I don't want too much because I don't want it to gloop out the sides because it can be shiny. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm actually going to use a little silicone paintbrush, makeup brush here, and spread it out, thin it out. There we go. You know what? That's still a little too wide. I do. I've got to work quick. 
little too wide. Come on. Oh boy, come on. It's tense. Move it over a bit. At least you can slide it a bit. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Come on, I want that. I just wanted it down a little bit. I wanted to be able to see more of that little flag. And it cooperated. Yay. I wonder who that was. All right, so, oh my goodness, that's really cute. All right, let's move this over. And this is going to go right here. Now, I think it needs to still be curved a bit more. Fortunately, it's all paper, so you can do this. Well, it's cardstock, but you know what I mean. Oh, yes. And then it's going to go right there, like that. And another nice thing that I thought of for doing this is, here it said Volume 8. Well, I don't want Volume 8. I just want this to be like it's its own wonderful thing. Now, I think I want... <clears throat> no, I was thinking I might want my rice bag to lay on top of it, but I'm just going to hold my hand over it. So, here we go with the... Um, here we go with three and one. Now again, I'm going to use a slightly larger silicone makeup brush and spread this around out to the edges. But I don't want it squishing out when I push down on it. There we go. Don't want to take too long because once you thin it out, it really will dry and adhere quite quickly. Okay. Now I got to move this a bit. I'm terribly sorry, but the frame of my phone, I can't see where I'm putting it because of the frame of my phone is in the way of my screen right here. That's good. And that completely gives even more support to... I can move this now, sorry. I'm sorry for that, but you need to know all I did was plop it down. Because this was paper, I can see a little bit of the embossing from, I think it's the O from volume 8. Um, I don't mind that. Because like I said, I want this paper to look like it's 99 years old. Oh, that looks awesome. That's exactly what I hoped it would look like. Oh, isn't that pretty? You can still see here and the lines here. 
I'm okay with that. I didn't want to take it out too far right to the edge because I think you run a greater risk of it getting caught on things. It's a little bit more protected because it's in from the edges and I'm okay with that. I think that turned out really, really pretty. Imagine that on a, uh, on like a bookshelf. Let me turn it this way so you can see. Sorry, I'm so close. Hold on. 